Zachary Clapper, and I am working on Touch of Math, um, which is an educational tool for manipulating algebraic functions in a visual manner. Um, and rather than try and go through and talk about the back end and all that fun stuff, I figured I'd just demo. And everyone loves demos. I do. <laughs> So this is the current interface, it's not very fancy right now, but you enter in your equation over here, and then you click the display button, and it displays it. Um, so, <laughs> so you can do things like drag the variables over, um, and it will subtract it over if it's addition. You can also do things like division and multiplication, amazing. <laughs> Uh, you can also support, it also currently supports uh, more complex uh, operations, such as parentheses and order of operations and all that fun stuff. Say that fairly simple. So, the biggest change between last semester and this semester so far has been the addition of evaluation of actual numbers. So if we do something like this, uh, that's a really hard equation. I can't do that on my own, so I need to use this tool to solve it. So you can divide the two over. Oh, 10 halves. I know that. Isn't that simplified to something else? Oh, it's five. There you go. <laughs> so that's the, the biggest jump in last semester. It also um, can display a lot of things that aren't necessarily semantically functional right now, like you can do summations sum of x from 1 to 5, it'll display it. You can drag it around, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> drag it as a whole. Um, <clears throat> so I figured I'd make this a little interactive. Does anyone have a little equation they want to see us manipulate? Any? Yes. Just out of curiosity, could you do like x plus x is 2x? Will it, it will not do that. Okay. It only simplifies. Uh, well, it only it only simplifies uh, numbers right now. Okay. I'll just keep the same thing. Does it support squares and square roots? It will display them. It does not evaluate them at this time. So you can just do. You can also you know do more complex things like. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bug. That's very interesting. Okay. Yes. Peter. So it's browser based. Does it work on mobile devices too? Can it does. It on my iPad? You can play with it on your iPad. It's not multi touch yet, but it will work just like this. Um, you can also play for those of you on Android devices as well. You can also <laughs> Um, yeah, so <laughs> right now it works very well in Safari because that's what it was developed in. I'm talking the, the, the visual part of it. The back end will work in anything. It's, it's all JavaScript. Um, Firefox has some fun bugs, but it's pretty, pretty much the same. WebKit works great. Um, Internet Explorer does not work right now. It will, though, because our target is schools, and most schools do not have the most current web browser. <laughs> The other uh, suggestions? So eventually it will be touch sensitive or? Uh, yes. So right now it's just single touch um, so that you can use it on the web browser, but it will detect if you're on a mobile device in the future. And then you can do things like drag two together to evaluate because um, you can be a little more specific than what you do right now and things like that. Yes. Uh, so what kind of um, I guess tutorial to how to use this is going to be about, are you just going to have documentation for it or are you going to have like on display help um, for how to do things? Like I, I would, it wasn't obvious to me that dragging one number up top of another right. would evaluate that. Right? So it will be sort of a combination. Um, so some things like the fact that you can drag things will have to be more of a documentation type of thing. But there's going to be a whole environment. Um, so you know if, if you're actually using it to solve something, to manipulate things, when I do like this, um, it'll be as if you wrote it on the line below, so it'll kind of shift up, and it'll show your history, and you can go back and look at things like that. Can yes. you cheat something like, um, if you're going to use a web browser or a mobile device, 
whenever you have an equation like the equation you had, can you send it to Wolfram Alpha and get the result back in some form or Google or so on? Uh, potentially, yes. The I mean, provides you the that. From Alpha provides you with an API or something. Right. right. Maybe if you need help with your calc homework, you can okay. cheat. Yes. Uh, what, happens <laughs> <if you're laughs> what happens if you try to divide by the C again? Does it, does it put it over the entire term or does it do it over the... Okay. Yes, so it, it, knows, it knows how to... Okay. Yes. What happens if you move the D over? <laughs> Who knows? It subtracts it over. <laughs> <laughs> Cheats a little there. Actually, so you, sorry. Yes. Uh, great values, subscripts, and constants. Do you have any of those? Not uh, explicitly. No. Right now, anything that is not a not a numeral is considered a a variable. Um, and variables are constants are the same right now because it won't actually evaluate them. So, like d over d, it doesn't know that's one. Yes. Do it. Yes. If you move the b to the other side, does it move? Everything? Will, will it actually so know what's So what it's going to do is it's going to take the A and B as a whole. But right now, parentheses don't move. So that's going to be kind of scary. No, it's not. It's like <laughs> I lied. This it's going to subtract that whole term over. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a little... Uh, you can go to the other side. Uh oh. That will let me. What's the zero? So it does evaluate zeros. So this is different than last semester as well. Okay. Last time we did zero minus zero is minus two. Am yes, I right in thinking that you used to have a server back then? Or no, is it always it's, all been in JavaScript? It's always been in JavaScript. It's always been all client side. And, and that's the intention moving forward? I think that's, that's just the intention. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be a self contained. You know, I don't have an internet connection, but I got it on my phone here. So. Alex will be very happy. That yes. This is, uh, it, it all started with Alex. Those of you who remember Alex and Snow Crabs who works at uh, Apple, it started with Alex, then um, Joe joined, then Zach joined. Alex left for Apple, Joe, Joe left for Cornell, and uh, now Zach. Oh, I'm, I'm the only one who's left. <laughs> started last semester, and now I'm leading this semester, working up the chain. Yes. <laughs> Can you copy the equation after you've manipulated uh, it? You mean the displayed version? Yeah, the displayed version. Like, uh, like not right now, but that is something I've been looking into. Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, a like a common format that you could paste into that, yeah, Word yes. or something. Yeah, or right. So that will be mathematical type of thing. Unlike Wolfram Alpha, which is copied, yeah, yes. we don't need copy that. Copy that. Yes. <laughs> LaTeX or something? Uh, yeah. Any of those uh, research them. Maybe all of them. That'd be cool. Be as compatible as possible. Awesome. Yes. Does it support? Negative numbers. So far, I've seen zero minus things, but I haven't ever seen an actual negative. So it supports them in that it. So I can do like you know. So it treats it, it treats it as a negative number, but it doesn't know like zero minus something. It won't know to just put a negative sign in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes. So I should. And then you have to combine them, and then it evaluates it, but not quite. As you can see, it treats it as a self-contained thing. It doesn't actually. Yeah. Is that it? Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you, guys.